Okay, today I'm going to talk about the Levitical priesthood. It's, it actually stems from a question about who is or who was Melchizedek. To understand Melchizedek, we have to understand the priesthood of the Levites. Okay, this is a two-part series. What's this got to do with Jesus? Everything. The covenant in the Old Testament is a shadow of the perfection that is to come in Jesus. To understand Jesus' vocation and understanding of the Old Testament is required. The Old Testament is long and arduous, so full of history. Exactly. The history should fascinate us. In only reading the New Testament, one cannot get away from the myriad of track back the references to the Old Testament. Our Lord Jesus came to fulfill the promises of God made in the Old Testament. I know a lot of Christians who only read the New Testament and they are baffled. I heard a very Christian ask, who is Melchizedek? This is an important question. We in the Episcopal Church has been taught regarding Melchizedek. So most people in my group, housewives and all, knows about Melchizedek. He appears in many places in the Bible, in Genesis, in Psalms, and the Epistle to the Hebrews, and has been compared to Jesus, or Jesus has been compared to him. To understand the relationship between Jesus and Melchizedek, we must know something about the tribe of Levi. In the book of Exodus, we read the account of Moses going up to Mount Sinai to receive the tablets of stone on which is written the Ten Commandments. Till this point, they worship God on rough hewn altars, picked up rocks, stacked them up, slaughtered animals on them, sprinkled the blood, burned the carcass, roasted and ate part of the animal in God's presence. Everything is so primitive. Then came the call for a little sophistication. And continuing with Exodus, Moses was summoned up again Mount Sinai. He went up many times, this time to receive instructions for constructing the tabernacle. The, and also this time, up to this point, the Ten Commandments was given in oral form. And this time, together with the instructions on constructing the tabernacle, was given the Ten Commandments in the stone form, written down on stone. So once built, Aaron and his sons were to act as priests regarding the ritual of contact with God. Fast forward to the book of Numbers. In chapter 1, we read of the 12 tribes. They're actually the 12 sons of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. So the 12 tribes were the descendant of Jacob, Israel. And after that time has passed, has grown in number. But he had other children with his two wives, Leah and Rachel, and also with the slave girl Zilpah, a slave girl. I would ask you to read the account in Genesis on your own. Even after, the re after reading the Bible for 60 years, I'm still flummoxed when I wrote this. Did Jacob, Israel only have 12 sons? Now I'm going to introduce Levi, another son, who was not numbered with the previous 12. How could... How could that be? So he had 12 sons and you take out the tribe of Levi, that leaves 11. So who makes up the 12? If you read, I think it's Exodus, I forgot, that Joseph's name, he had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, and they were divided into two, the half tribes of Joseph. So that, that makes the 12 when Levi, the tribe of Levi is taken out. So initially, Aaron and his sons were anointed or appointed and set apart to ministers to minister as priests. The book of Numbers is so named because of the two senses, 
taken in the beginning of the book and in chapter 26. The 12 tribes were numbered to see how many fighting men they had. And then a census of, was taken of the tribe of Levi. And, and they were, in the case of Levi, they were to count every male who was one month old or older. The reason, there's a reason for this, there's a reason for everything. Read Numbers chapter 24, sorry, Numbers 4. The tribe of Levi would not get any land when they enter, when they conquer the land of Canaan. Their duty would be to assist Aaron and his sons in their priestly duties. So the tribe of Levi was to be the priestly line. You cannot be a priest unless you are from the tribe of Levi. Exodus clearly identify the tribe of Levites and its principal members. Verse 26, verse 20, sorry. We read Amran married to Jacobat and she bore him Aaron and Moses. It is very clear that Moses and Aaron were from the tribe of Levi. I have left out a lot of intrigue and it is your job to fill in the blanks for yourself. What's this got to do with Jesus? Did Jacob, Israel have 12 sons? Yes, Levi was taken and just as I said, Joseph's two sons were split and each got a share in the land. So Joseph actually got two shares. So that makes up the 12. So in the next lesson, I will go on to make the connection between Jesus and the high priest and eventually to Melchizedek. So stay tuned. But in the meantime, you have a work. You can read Genesis, Exodus, and Numbers all together. And why not?